Hello Flasstube, it's Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner and I am here with a new update. It's been a while, um, a couple of weeks, so this one is going to be long. We have some finishes, we have some whips, we have some new starts, change in rotations, FIFA World Cup plans, slash my craziness about the World Cup. So get a drink and get comfy, get your stitching, because we're going to have a good time and I'm drinking cranberry raspberry water. It's not sparkling anymore because it's flat. But it tastes better than normal water. <laughs> anyway, so, um, my last video, I had completed week two of Mania. And I was going strong. I was sticking to my plans and I was super excited about that. I got halfway through my uh, Mill Hill week and um, I was browsing Etsy and you may recall my anniversary, my two year anniversary with my boyfriend was coming up and I was browsing Etsy and I found the perfect pattern that I thought I could actually finish in time and so basically Everything else was dropped and I stitched non-stop on that and our anniversary was the 28th of May, which was Memorial Day, so we had it off work. Um, I finished cross-stitching it. It took a week. I finished cross-stitching it and framing it an hour before he picked me up for our date. Um... So, I, I wanted to film an update to show you guys, but unfortunately, it has been gifted and I don't have it anymore. Um, our anniversary was really nice. We uh, went to my favorite sandwich shop. Um, we went to the mall. We went to the place we first met. We met online, but we first met in person at a park because it was... A neutral spot and he could have been a serial killer <laughs> so uh, we went back to the park where we first met took some pictures and we went to Benihana for dinner it was a really nice day um, you may recall I was hoping for a proposal but a few weeks before our anniversary uh, we had a conversation that uh, basically I didn't realize how afraid of marriage he was. He has bad experience with marriage, um, his parents' marriage, and his first marriage, which ended in death, not cancer. So there's, like, this extra stigma that goes with it because it was a bad marriage, but you still carry the guilt that she died and, um... So, whereas I was raised around really good marriages, my parents have a great, sometimes nauseatingly good marriage. Um, I was raised in the mission field, surrounded by people who were happily married, who loved their spouses and loved their kids. And so, you know, my whole life I've just wanted to be married and um, wanted kids, and kids are not in the books for me because... Um, I believe I mentioned, I found out last year I'm infertile, so uh, so that was a really hard wake-up call, but I'd made my peace with it, and so um, he says he thinks about it every day, so it's not off the books, it's just it's not, it's not yet, and um, I still hope that someday he'll love me more than he's scared of marriage, uh, but that remains to be seen. And so, um, I love him more than I want to be married at this point. You know, you don't know what's going to change. Someday I might wake up and be like, hey, I want to get married. And if you're never going to give that to me. Anyways, I didn't mean to go off on a rant about this. But, you know, it's just where my head's at. Anyways, we had a really good day and because I had made my peace with the fact that I wasn't going to get a proposal like I thought um, I was able to just enjoy the day I got these flowers and they're really beautiful he normally gives me a bouquet of roses and I'm actually much happier with those because they're just so bright and he got me the vase too and it's really springy um, he got me this 
new chain, which isn't actually connected to this one, but they usually end up wound up together, and they're really pretty together. And um, I got a new charm for my bracelet. It's, uh, let's see if I can isolate it. Yeah, two hearts um, with diamonds. So, I mean, I got spoiled. I got spoiled, and it was a really good day. The weather was beautiful. California's weather is being... S I, I mean, I can't speak about Southern California because I live in Northern California, but Northern California weather has been so bipolar, okay? We had, um, like, last weekend, it was 104. 104 degrees. And then the next day, it was down in the 70s. And if there was just a little in between, that would be so much better because my body is just not handling it well. I feel sick and stuff. No. Oh. And 104 is brutal. I just, I can't deal. Anyways, so we talked about the anniversary. And so the, oh, the whole reason I was talking to you guys about that is because um, I have a picture on my phone that I'm going to try to show you, but I don't have the cross stitch anymore because obviously I've gifted it to him. I will try to remember to put a link to my Instagram that has a picture because you might be able to see it better than me holding up my camera. Um, so here we go. Um... And so I stitched and I framed that myself. It says, I would rather share one lifetime with you than face all the ages of this world alone. And then um, over here, instead of putting those blue loops, I put uh, K loves H in 2018. And that's how I did, that's how I signed the last anniversary present except for it was 2017. Sorry, the clouds are covering the sun, and so the lighting is going to change. But anyways, so I was really super impressed that I managed to get that done in, I think, a week and a day is how long it took me. Um, so that was really good. Really happy about that. Since then, is that what I wanted to talk about next? I guess. Okay, one other thing that's kind of off a tangent is last time I checked, I'm at 497 subscribers, and I want to thank all of you guys who are subscribed. And when I get to 500 subscribers, which, you know, it could take a while because I've been hovering around 490 for quite a while, like a month or two, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm um, probably going to give away... Um, a project bag and because I was always taught that you can't give a bag empty actually I was told that about wallets but I think it's the same principle I'll be including probably a chart maybe some fabric we'll see I have to go through my stash um, so if you know anyone who's not subscribed to me and you want to have a giveaway open up <laughs> send them my way <laughs> Oh, just kidding. Whatever. I'm not in any hurry to get to 500, so. Um, so when that happens, I will post a video. There will be a giveaway, and um, I will make a project bag specific for you, if um, whoever wins. So, let's get on to... Mm. Well, I'm trying to decide if I should show you guys my finishes or if I should talk about my rotation change or if I should show you the mill hills that I did work on. So, um, I'm just going to show my finishes and show my finishes. So, the first finish I, ha I had was this one that I just pulled out of my old whip pile. And at the time, I'd only done thing one and thing two. So I spent, uh, probably it took me about six hours to stitch the cat in the hat, the Grinch, and then the words. And it says, 
You're never too old, too wacky, too wild to pick up a book and read to a child. And this is most likely going to be a gift for my mother. Um, when we were growing up, my mom used to dress as um, the cat in the hat in Sam I Am. And she would reenact green, green eggs and ham every St. Patrick's Day in all of our classes. Um, I don't even know for how long, but she has the whole thing memorized. And my mom does not like eggs. Like, I don't like eggs either, but my mom doesn't like eggs. But she would force herself to eat a mouthful of green eggs, green scrambled eggs, and green ham every single St. Patrick's Day, and it was just, it, it was such a huge part of my childhood. My mom is a kindergarten teacher, and so she's really crazy, um, in the best possible way, crazy about holidays and traditions and all these kind of things. Every St. Patrick's Day, we went to, we went to school with green bread, because my mom made green bread in the bread machine, and... We would pour our white milk into our cereal bowls, and it would turn green. And, um, I mean, my mom was, like, the queen of creative little things that just bring holidays alive. And uh, it, it was great growing up. But so I, I saw this one. It's Dr. Seuss by Clouds Factory. And I, I think at the time I started it, in, like, 2014, I thought of my mom. And so, um, Lori Grafour, who's one of my best friends forever, suggested maybe I do a, uh, no so, no so, um, finish. And so I'm thinking about that, or I'm thinking about, it can fit into a 5 by 7 frame, so I'm also thinking about that. So, we will see. I'm not in any rush, because I don't get to see my mom again for quite a while. My other finish is, guys, I finished the Germany shawl in all of its magnificent glory. It is, <laughs> it is huge. Or as Alex calls it, her Hufflepuff Gryffindor shawl. Because after the World Cup for Christmas, I'm giving it to her. But I'm using it for the World Cup. And yes, I am wearing a soccer jersey, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. So basically, you wear it kind of like this. And there you go. I like it. So, yeah. I was really happy with the finish. Um... So, yep, it is, when you put it out, like, look, it's still going. I can't even hold both ends. It's so huge. But so, Alex, that's for you. And now, let me show you the mill... Oh, one fell. The Mill Hills. So I managed to work on three of them during that Mill Hill rotation. So the first, well, I'm not actually sure it was the first one, but one of them was this Christmas nest. This is going to be a gift for my grandfather. And I finished all of the cross stitching on it. So that is a heck of a lot of beads to go. But it will be beautiful. So. Next I worked on this little train for my nephew. He loves trains. And I also finished all the cross stitching on it. So all that's left is the beading. For my sister Alex, I worked on these ice skates. 
and I still have two colors to go. Both are shades of blue. And then there's the beading, but I mean, it's majority cross stitch done. So those are the three Mill Hill kits I did work on and the others will get worked on eventually. And I didn't start any Carolyn Mannings, even though I, like, contemplated doing a Carolyn Manning only mania. So, that makes me really sad, but it is what it is. I worked on um, my His Hands while listening to the scriptures. I am behind on the scripture study program with my parents, so today I'll spend some time trying to catch up. But I made some pretty good progress on this. All of this is filled in, so I'm working my way down, filling this in. And um, I'm over halfway done on the first of four pages. So I am happy with my progress on that. More later. Um, then I had two new cross stitch and one crochet new start so um there's no cover picture but i joined the north pole welcome sal from tempting tangles and there's 16 parts so far three of them have been released and i have the very tiniest of starts over here this is like an elf's hair and this is going to be a present um, this is a 14 count opalescent white that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I don't know if this has been talked about on other floss tube channels, but like, you know, Hobby Lobby was really decreasing the amount of fabric that they have. And at least at my store, they brought in a lot more fabric. Like they just changed it. It's now that Artiste brand. But I feel like a lot of it is more to my taste now than what they had before. So I'm actually really excited about that because Hobby Lobby is like literally two minutes from my work. And um, I'm not a person who really likes to go and purchase. Well, I don't really like to buy things online a lot because... I like to use coupons, and 123Stitch doesn't have coupons, so um, so I much prefer to just, it, and I also like to start things when I want to start them, and so I like to be able to go to the store and pick up the fabric and just be able to start that night if that's what I want to do. Um, so I was really excited about that. Um, so that's about 100 stitches, and so I have a have a little catching up to do. And then Vicky from Reading and Stitching and I um, decided to stitch together Minnie Jane and the Prisoner of Wool House. This is just black and white, but I love this one. There's only 12 pages in this pattern. And um, we're going to try to do about uh, she's going to do two columns across so that's about 1600 stitches a month and my stitching is a little bit more all over the place I'm kind of working down in two columns but I've gone out and stuff like that so I do have in slightly over 1600 stitches here and so this is my stopping place for the month. So um, I, this is 25 count um, magic guide. And I'm doing it one over one full crosses. And okay, the only other time I've stitched with 25 count, I did two over one full crosses on a hay that I abandoned because that's way too thick. And so I thought I hated 25 count. 
but I've discovered with this project, I actually really love it, especially this pre-girded stuff. Um, I would prefer if they were in 10 by 10s but, um, I mean, it is what it is. I was given this fabric by Shauna. Thank you, Shauna. Uh, she's in the local group that I sometimes go and cross-stitch with. And I hope to be able to go and cross-stitch with you guys this time because my boyfriend's out of town that weekend, so I'm super excited about that. Saturday night is normally date night for us, so, um, so I, I'm not always able to make it. But he's out of town, and, um, so I'm going to be there. So thank you for the fabric, and I really love it. Um, okay, my crochet new start. There was, or it still is, this free crochet along that's being released called the Unicorn Mandala Cow. It's going to be, um, and that's a C-A-L, not a K, because it's crochet, crochet along. So Unicorn Mandala Cow, so far five parts have been released out of seven, and I'm on part three, and this is what it looks like so far, and I love, 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 love my yarn. So, up close you can see there's a lot more of the fancier stitches in there popcorn stitches, uh, cross stitches, oh, actually I think these are puff stitches, not popcorn, anyways, I love it, this is what the rest of the cake looks like, so it's going to have this pink center, and then it's going to work further out to this nice teal blue, and so I need to catch up. But I am really loving and enjoying this. And for anyone who wants to try it, any crocheters, I'll try to remember to link the pattern. So those are my whips. Um, I want to talk about, real quick, this change in rotation that I'm doing. Um, so I completed that spreadsheet um, that I told you guys about where I listed all of my projects and number of stitches and stuff like all that. Date last worked on and date I started, although I had to guess the start date for like almost everything. So I printed it out and there are four pages of, well, does that fourth page get a count? Okay, no, the fourth page does not get a count. There are three pages. Because this is the fourth. This is why the fourth page doesn't get a count. Okay, it's blank basically. So, um, I would like to at least work thirty to sixty minutes on every project this year to say that I've at least worked on them. And I hope that stitching on them that time will tell me which ones I'm passionate about and which ones I want to um, kind of just put on on the back burner for a while so um or possibly ufo so i have changed my rotation plans and i have printed it out here i came up with 15 categories and i once i put 10 hours for each um but i want to do especially for this month at least five in each category but um so for the first week, I'm highlighting in pink. And for my rotation style, what I mean by that is that um, I'm not necessarily going to do all, t even though it appears like I have, I'm not necessarily going to do all 10 of a category before moving on to the next. I might just do an hour on a certain category and then do an hour on something else. But, um... So the categories I came up with are, and they're here on the blackboard where I'm also tracking them, um, parental unit, so I'm 
gift for my parents, gift for my sister Kirsten in Germany, gift for my sister Johanna, she's the one here in Fresno, gift for my sister Alexandra, she's getting that shawl, and then, so that took me eight hours to finish, I spent the last two as additional time on the ice skates, um, because I only started this in June. Gift for my nephew Hayden. So for him, I found this Disney pattern on um, Etsy. So I'm going to order the fabric today that I want to stitch it on. And, um, and then I, I'm probably going to have to give him more than 10 hours, honestly. I need to do at least one major motif a week. At least one. Um, plus some of the smaller motifs in order to finish it by Christmas. But Hayden has his own, and that's why Hayden has his own category. <laughs> instead of just being lumped with my sister Kirsten. So then extended family, so like my aunt, my grandpa, um... My boyfriend has a category because I need to finish, like, I actually need to focus and not just put his gifts off until, like, the month of the event because that's doing me in. Then my ladies have their own category because I have that green conversion of red and I have portrait of Veronica and I haven't worked on either of them in 2018. So I want to spend time on projects for myself as well. Then my Stitching George Washington project, the bane of my existence. My mom's over here like, I told you not to sign up for that. Yeah, mom, I know. I wish I listened. Um, Sal's that I'm involved in, so I'll give them 10 hours. Jane with Vicky. That, um, so basically I'm going to stitch for 10 hours on mini Jane seasonal and I'm including holidays with seasonal so if it's a Christmas related piece then I'm going to count that as seasonal or Halloween Easter anything like that okay this is where the this spreadsheet comes in and I have a category called random oldies so I might randomly choose one or I might use a, the number generator to randomize and pick one for me but in, in order to get them all, um, I need to do at least 10 of them and possibly more. The next category I have here is focus for a finish. And that's when I worked on the Dr. Seuss one. Because I saw it and I was like, yeah, I would like to finish that. And so I spent six hours finishing it. I have other ones that are close to a finish that... I might just decide, yeah, this month I'm going to work on this. Or maybe it's going to be build, um, beating a Mill Hill kit. Things like that. Things that will push me towards being finished with it will be in that focus, focus for a finish category. And then I have other because I'm a moody stitcher and maybe I just want to start something or I don't know. I'm um, Because I didn't start all those Carolyn Mannings and I didn't start the... Um, two other Mill Hill kits, I am actually under 150 whips. I'm at 144. So I'd like to keep it under that, and I'm thinking if I could get it to 140, then I'll reward myself with a start. Um, and kind of do like that, maybe every five. So finish five, get it down. Well, I mean, it would have to be six then to get it down to 135 and like that. Um, a lot of my whips are Hades, and so I'm never going to get it probably below 50. Um, but if I could get it lower, that would be really good because um, I'm not a product stitcher. It's all about the process for me. But it, it would be nice to hang up and display some of my things. And to possibly talk my boyfriend into framing things as anniversary or big gift presents instead of giving me jewelry because I'm running out of body space to put the jewelry on. 
I'm also one of those people that like to wear my gifts. <laughs> so Christmas can be really amusing in our family because we all do it. Like anything that's wearable you put on as you're opening your presents. And so you can end up with some interesting combinations on Christmas Day. Like, interesting. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. It would be nice to talk him into framing some things. <laughs> I mean, because that's like the cost of jewelry, right? So, that's my, th um, so that's my new rotation plan. And so, uh, on Monday I'll switch colors and I'll show you guys what it looks like after that. Now, oh, oh, one other thing. I also joined a Sal for, um... Another Carolyn Manning sal. This one is Secret Gardens. And each month there's a new garden. And I'm going to stitch them all in the same fabric. So, see, this is one I got over at Hobby Lobby. I mean, $20. But you use your 40% off coupon. And it's, um... So it's $12. For this 30 by 36 inch piece of fabric. $12 for this is a good deal. So later after I'm done filming this I'm gonna coffee tea dye this. I need to watch that video from Priscilla and Chelsea again. Um, and I'm going to stitch the secret garden on here. Woohoo! <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, so that brings us to our final and my most exciting topic, the FIFA World Cup. Woohoo! Go Germany! Okay, I am wearing a Germany jersey from the last World Cup, number 11, Miroslav Klose. He is one of my favorite players. He's retired now. Um, he is the current holder of the most goals scored in a World Cup. He has 16. Um... Ironically, or sadly for Brazil, he beat who was the previous world um, goal scored in a World Cup holder was a Brazilian who had 15. And in Germany's match against Brazil in the last World Cup is when Miroslav Klose scored goal number 16 and beat that record. And considering we beat Brazil 7 to 1 in that game. I mean, it was just like salt on an open wound. It was it was pretty brutal, but it was beautiful if you're a Germany fan. I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> I just recently rewatched that match and I forgot how much I enjoyed that. Um but so the World Cup starts on Thursday and I could not be more excited. I've pulled out my bullet journal and I bullet journaled the heck out of the World Cup. And so I'm just going to show you guys that a little bit. So in blue on my daily spreads, I put in um, each of the games the start times. And Germany is in orange, so it'll stand out because those are the most. I intend on watching every game. Um, this blank space over here, um, you can see from a previous week, is usually my to-do list. So I fill that in as I get to the week. So I did that for all the group stages. Um, and over here, I made the boxes, but because these are the knockout stages, so it's not determined yet who's going to be playing in those games. So once that happens, I'll fill out more. But then we come to this section. My FIFA World Cup 2018 held in Russia. These are the 32 countries participating in alphabetical order. My plan here is to write the date that they're eliminated until it's down to the finals. Um, the World Cup does have a third place match, so I will put who gets the third place and then first and second. Um, and then I went through and made these works of art. I mean, my handwriting's not good, don't judge me guys, but... Group A, Group B, C and D. So in each group, I put who, the countries in it. 
Um, and then these are the stats that will go there. So win, W is win, draw, loss, goals for, goals against, the plus and minus, that's the differential between the goals for and against, and then the number of points. So in soccer, um, in a competition like this, Every win is worth three points. A draw or a tie is worth one point and then a loss is zero. So when did so from each group, the two teams that have the most points will move on to the knockout stages and then the next two countries will be eliminated. So um, so I put that. I'm thinking I'll just use like check marks because um, there's each country has three matches. So here are the matches, the time, the date, who is versus who, and then I will fill in the scores over here. Then I made my prediction of who's going to be at the top, second, third, fourth, and then a spot over here for how it actually went down. So, I mean, I'll show you Germany's because obviously that's where my main focus is. So in Germany's group is Group F. There's Germany, Mexico, Sweden, and Korea Republic. That's South Korea. Um, Germany's first, first match is on the 17th, so in a week. Um, my predictions are that Germany's going to top the group. Then I put Sweden, and then Mexico, and then Korea. But Sweden and Mexico can probably, like, switch around. I'm not positive. Apparently, it's been quite a while since, like, Mexico didn't go to the knockout stages. But I don't know why I have it in my head that Sweden's really good. I know they knocked out Italy um, to qualify for the World Cup, so that might be where I'm thinking. You guys don't care. You're not, like, super... Soccerholics like I am. You don't know what you're missing. It's it's called the beautiful game for a reason. Anyway, so then we get to the round of 16. So I'll fill that in more. Quarterfinals and semifinals. Then the third place and the final. And then across from that we have Stitch Mania's World Cup Challenge. And if you, I mean, you guys probably don't know this, but I am actually the person who suggested the World Cup challenge to Katie and Garrett uh, for the World Cup when they were asking for ideas for, uh, for sows and stuff. Last year, I suggested a World Cup one, and they did it. So I was super excited about that. They chose some categories that I wouldn't have chosen they did too many number specific things in my opinion, but their group, their rules, so I went with it. At first, okay, so I have one specific piece that I am planning on stitching while watching games, and I will only work on this piece while watching games, and um, I'll show you that in a minute. And a, that piece can actually work for the vast majority of these challenges. And at first I thought that that would be what I would do. Um, but then I was watching the Stitching Mommy, Sarah. She's fabulous and I love her. And um, I mean, she really inspired me to branch out and pick different projects for everyone, especially considering I have 144 whips. So I spent about three hours last night deciding what I was going to do. And so um, for each category, I'm going to try to put in about a half an hour to an hour, sometimes more, sometimes less, of stitching on a project specifically for um, that category. So, I am going to show, show you guys my plans. And here's the pile. <laughs> so, that's why I said this is going to be a long video. Oops. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm going to try to pop this up here so I can still read it. 
but have the pile in front of me. Okay. First off, um, the project that I am going to work on during the games. If you were following me and watching me back around the Olympics, you may remember that I have this piece that I started forever ago and I absolutely love, but my fabric is stained and I'm not entirely sure I have enough fabric on it. And, um, and this is Around the World in 80 Stitches. And I think that this chart is really actually perfect for an international themed event like the World Cup or like the Olympics. So my plan is to work on this project during any international themed kind of sports stuff um, that I watch. However, because it was so stained, I restarted it. I do, I do actually really like my color choices, so I stuck with those. But I only got a very small start during the Olympics because it was really hard to watch figure skating and, and cross stitch at the same time. Let me tell you guys. So, um, I have one of those two hearts done and I had started with this. Um, it's a specialty stitch. And that's all I have done. So I am hoping to at least finish part one, possibly more, um, during the World Cup. Because there are a ton of games to watch. The Sal goes till the 28th, I believe. Um, and for the World Cup itself, that's just the group stages. Um, the knockout stages continue until July 15th is when the final is played. However, the concentration of games, um, Sarah was asking me about this, so I'll, I'll answer you guys here. The concentration of games does cut down drastically because there has to be at least three days between soccer matches for any particular team to give the players adequate time to rest and um, soccer is a really high intensity sport. There's a lot of running. You run 10, 11, 12 kilometers per 90 minute game and that's a lot. Um, so, so they have to have rest time in between matches. And keep in mind that a season for soccer, it goes from August to through May, through May. So they have very long seasons where they play once to twice a week, um, depending on what club they play for. It could be across multiple um, multiple competitions. So um, one of my favorite players for Germany uh, played up through the sometime in the in the May 20s, somewhere in the May 20s. And so he had only a couple of weeks between the Champions League final and having to start play for Germany. And I mean, that's exhausting and it can lead to injuries and stuff like that. So yes, there is a high concentration of matches in the beginning. Every day has three matches except for, um, some have four. There's one Saturday that has four, and then um, for the final match for each group, the matches are played at the same time so that no team has an advantage in knowing how a game ended already. So, um, so those matches are played simultaneously, so two groups will play a day. So in California, one match is put, I mean, two matches for one group is played at 7 o'clock and then two matches for another group is played at 11 o'clock. So that's how that works. However, following that, you get days with no soccer matches at all. So the final group match happens and um, then there's a day with no, no matches before the round of 16 starts. And then there's uh, like two matches a day through the round of 16. And then there's a few days with no matches at all. 
And then there's the quarterfinals, and that's eight teams. And then there's the semifinals, and that's two teams. And then there's the final. It, but there's about three days in between each of those groupings. Um, so, yes, the concentration of games is it's high in the beginning and lower. So I understand why the, um, the style is only for during the group stages. Um, so there's that. Um, oh, oops. If you want to see some more of the colors that I'm using in that, I mean, I have yellow and orange and blues and purples, different shades of green. I'm still questioning. Are you? No, you're black. I've been questioning this particular green, but I don't know. I'll probably stick with it. Oh, wait. I have to stick with it because I've already used it on the new one. Uh, ditzy moment. Anyways, and then um, the beads that I originally chose, Toho. That was part of the other problem with the original one is that I beaded as I went along, but I didn't have a stand at the time, and so the Q-snaps and the hoops were messing up the beads, and so it was just a mess. But I have grown as a stitcher since then. Um, okay, anyways, so going back to the World Cup Challenge, June 4th, it's the first day of the World Cup, and there's only one match that day, and it's played by Russia. But the challenge for that day is host. It's called Host Country Russia, and we're supposed to stitch on something Russian-themed or buy a Russian designer or with the flag colors. So I chose Postcards of the World by Clouds Factory. And Russia is one of the blocks on it. However, I won't be stitching on that block because this is literally as much as I have done. So not even one complete outline. So I will spend some time on that day stitching some more on this. As I stitch on these, I will be marking off the time stitched on them on my, my tracking. So I'm counting them as towards the rotation. I probably won't count around the world because um, each soccer match is two hours. Well, it's 90 minutes, and then there's a 15-minute halftime, and there can be extra time, so it's about it's about two hours. Um, so basically, five matches alone would take up the entire other category, so I'm, I'm just not going to count it. June 15th is soccer ball, something with black or white. Sorry, I feel like I have to sneeze. I chose um, Persian Flower Freebie by Blackwork Journey. Um, it's a free chart. This is how much I have done. I chose this one because it's black on white. So we've got black and white. And I would love if I could finish this. I might count that as a focus for a finish. I'm going to put these away as I go because otherwise, well, you guys know if you make floss tube, cleanup is a monster. Next, we have goal. Uh, June 16th is goal. Set a goal and meet it. So the goal that I set and the piece I chose, I chose Pumpkin Passport from um, Frosted Pumpkins. And I would like to finish the words. Or at least finish up through adventure. So let's go on an adventure. I finished on. And I've done most of adventure. So if I could finish all the words, that would be awesome. But I want to at least finish adventure. Um, June 17th is called FIFA, and um, FIFA, for those who don't know, stands for, um, well, it's not a word in English. Basically, the English translation is uh, the Federation 
International uh, Football Association to get it in that FIFA order. But basically, the International Federation of Football Association. So, um, that's what it stands for. And for that, I'm going to do African Elephant by Molink. And I don't have much started on that. I believe that is over here. And I got these ones. I have four of the big five. And I got them while in South Africa on vacation with my family. Not this Christmas, but the Christmas before. Um, if you're new to the channel, my dad is South African. And so we went on vacation to visit my South African family, my granny, um, so that my two brother-in-laws could see what the other places that we're from, like the other half of our heritage, because I'm half South African, half American. Uh, so it was a really good trip. Um, June 18th, eight champions. So for that, there have been 20 World Cups and um, from the 20 World Cups, there have only been eight countries who have won it. Brazil has won it five times. Germany and I believe Italy have won it four times. Um, I love the comment on Sarah's, uh, Sarah's Stitching Mommies World Cup winners. I love the, the, the facts on Sarah's, but I, I don't have them, don't have them memorized, unfortunately. Um, let's see, Brazil 5, Germany 4, Italy 4, Argentina 2, Uruguay 2, France, England, and Spain each have it one time. And then, um, the only other four countries to make it to a final, but they haven't won, but they've made it to a final, is the Netherlands, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Sweden. So, the Netherlands have been runners-up three times. I feel really bad for them, like, looking at this. That's really kind of sad. Anyways, so, for anything that's related to a number, I put in the random number generator, 1 through 44, and then I randomized it that number of times. And whatever number that was on the spreadsheet, I then went and did. Because my spreadsheet's alphabetical order and nothing went even close to 144, I just figured that was the best way to give any project a chance. So, um, so for this one, eight champions, I randomized it eight times and what I got was Cinderella from Brooks Books. This is what it will look like in color. <laughs> And this is my meager baby start on it. Uh, I believe it's this way. Yeah, I believe it's this way. So, I need to get more done on it. But when you say that about everything, it goes really slow. The next category is yellow card and stitch on something with yellow and um, for this one I chose okay this really old piece I have called love with a capital L and I was stitching this as a wedding present for um, a family friend who got married quite a while ago and um, when I didn't finish it by the wedding, I just kind of put it aside and it's been sitting aside for like five years. So I would like to kind of push to finish this, but it's by Papillion and um, here's where I'm at. 
their initials are D and S. I'm stitching this one over one on 28 count. And, um, I mean, I should be able to, I actually did what I've done pretty quickly, so if I just focused on it, I should be able to get more done. I would love to send it off to them at some point. We, are, we don't really talk much anymore, so that's part of why it didn't really get a big push. However, it is my sister's sister-in-law, so... Um, so yeah. June 20th is corner cake, so stitch on a piece that was started in a corner. And for that, I chose Lantern Lane by Little House Needleworks. I did start in the corner. And I would love to be able to finish the tree. So I did, I started up there and I did that and then I worked down. So I would love to be able to finish the tree. Um, June 21st is 21st World Cup, stitch something related to the number 21. So again, I randomized it 21 times and it the 21st was Secret Summer Garden by Carolyn Manning. And this is all that I've done on that. This is a stitch along that's ended, but that's all I've done. And I love it, it's beautiful, so I'm excited to work some more on that. Okay. Then June 22nd, football. Something related to football. It could be something with a foot or a ball. So what I decided to do with this is my favorite soccer club is Bayern Munich. They're in Munich in Germany. And I have a cross stitch that is of their crest. Um, and I don't have a picture of that, so I brought one of the jerseys I have of them so you guys could see. This is what it looks like. FC Bayern München. And, I mean, this is a huge full cover piece. That's all I've done. <laughs> So anything that could be stitched on this on that day is gravy. Because I'm not sure I'll ever finish this. Like, ever. Um, June 23rd, Defending Champions Germany. Something uh, German themed. This one was a bit of a struggle because um, neither Postcards of the World or Pumpkin Passport had Germany in theirs. So what I ended up deciding to do um, I do have the German OC by Chatelaine but I haven't started that and the reason is that I would like to do it someday for my boyfriend but until he commits and marries me it's just too big of a commitment to do it. Um, honestly, because chatelaines take years and they're expensive. And so until I have a permanent commitment, um, I don't want to get emotionally started on that. Uh, his family heritage is from Germany and there's a multiple reasons why that one is perfect for him. But, I mean, until I have that more permanent commitment, I don't want to start it. So even though I have the pattern... I decided to go a different route. So, still with Chatelaine, because Chatelaine is a German designer, Martina. I will be working on Serengeti Mandala. Um, I do have three Chatelaines in progress, and I decided on this one because... Um, 
my parents wedding anniversary is this month and this is a present for them so anyways I thought I would do work on it some more so I'm working on this medallion over here I am beading in except for like the huge beads I'm doing the beads as I go so this part is all beaded and specially stitched except for the big ones so I have these four medallions to do over here that um that will finish part one on this piece and part of the other reason I decided to go with this one as opposed to doing um, a, a different German because I have this like it's called token of love and it's a like a Quaker sampler by Bienberg just Dukin or something like that I don't know but um June 23rd is a Saturday, and my boyfriend is out of town, so I can basically just cross-stitch that day, and so I figured I would take advantage of that by working on this. And I would like to get 10 hours in on it this month, because for my parents. Um, let's see. June 24th, World Cup trophy related to an award. I have to move this aside. Um, with gold or with a cup. So I decided to do Celtic Noel because there is a lot of gold in it. And working with PB1, Petite Treasure Braid 1. And I have been working this design, and this is where her dress starts to come in. So I finished all the red. So I just have to do the green and then I am doing the metallic as I go. So if I could finish the green and the metallic along this border, that would be wonderful for that day. Um, red, so June 25th, red card, something red. For that one, I chose... Um, Storytime Sampler by the Frosted Pumpkin. I'm stitching this on Fiberlicious Poinsettia. And so that's my something red. I don't have much done. I'm still questioning my fabric, but we're going with it. Oops. Um... June 26, 11 team members, so I randomized to 11, and it told me to do Santa's, um, Santa's Village. I've only completed one, and I'm stitching this all in one piece. So the next one that I've started to work on the top border for is the um, Elves Workshop. So, I will work on that. Next up is Zabivaka. That's Russian. Um, so, for the wolf, that's the mascot this time around. So, stitch on something with an animal. And I am going to work on Nunavut... Santa for my sister Kirsten in Germany and this is where I'm at so if I could finish all the cross stitch on that that would be fabulous because then it's just beads left put that over here and the final one June 28th is 32 teams related to the number 32 and so I randomized 32 times and that got me rhino so I'm working on two of these this time. And I have even less on the rhino than I did on the elephant. So any progress will be good progress. Okay, we are just over an hour and I don't want my video to cut out. So I'm going to thank you guys for stopping by. Thanks for listening. I love your comments and I'm, I'm back to watching floss tubes. I'm trying to catch up with some people. Um... 
I am thinking of doing small daily vlogs like Tash does for Stitch Mania. I'm thinking about doing that for the World Cup. Still up in the air. We'll see. Um... But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this event and um, sharing my love of soccer with you guys. If you have any questions related to soccer or the World Cup, please let me know. I really am massively obsessed with it um, to a possibly unhealthy degree. This is combining two.